Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Shireen Saini and welcome back to our initiative, What After Dentistry. As you all know, we are a team of dentists with healthcare management background and we are here to guide you through various career options in dentistry and healthcare. Today we have with us Dr. Priyanga, who is currently working as an associate manager for regulatory and labeling solutions at a reputed pharmaceutical company. She graduated from Purg Institute of Dental Sciences in 2010 and after working for two years as a general dentist, she started her career as a clinical trial analyst in pharmaceutical industry. Her expertise lies in regulatory, literature search, publication analysis, clinical trial analysis and labeling. She has successfully trained and mentored people across various teams in pharmaceutical industry and keeps herself updating with the latest trends in the field of clinical research. We welcome you, Dr. Priyanga, to join with us on our platform today and we are really excited to discuss the scope and opportunities in the field of clinical research after BDS. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Shirin, for giving this opportunity and introducing me to wonderfully and I'm also looking forward to giving guidance to the videos grad new latest videos graduates like to welcome them to clinical research field as well yeah thank you so much so before we just you know formally get into the clinical research discussion we would just like to uh, know your experiences after completing videos how has been your journey what achievements or any kinds of you know struggles you have faced through uh, your journey after BDS. Sure. So, uh, yes, I when I got graduated from uh, like after BDS, I had practiced two years uh, in my hometown as a uh, chief dental surgeon. And later on, after when I got married and I moved uh, to Bangalore, I was doing my job hunt. Like during that time, I was mainly focusing on uh, looking into practice. But then later on, I understood the competition was so tough, and you no, know, to get a, a weekend, uh, to get into a clinic was a little challenging. And uh, during that period, I thought like to do something different and uh, uh, like what are the other opportunities for dentists? I started doing my research. And then uh, when I was checking on various portals, I noticed there is something called as uh, medical coders and medical writing, which uh, where they would prefer a BDS uh, dental doctor uh, uh, they would like to hire. So uh, when I reached out to many people like to see what is this, because it was new I mean, the, when i heard about it i felt it was new and then i was not aware of it and i was checking with various people and through a friend i came to know like no, there is a opportunity for a dentist as well to get into clinical research which is uh, where we can uh, develop new skills and although it's not not going to be anything related to practice but definitely our knowledge can be utilized so uh, through a friend i uh, uh, when I got uh, information on like you know, what kind of courses we have to do and uh, I came to know it's like we can do, do a short term diploma course and through that we can get into uh, in pharma industry. So I did uh, my clinical research uh, diploma which is uh, diploma in pharmacovigilance, medical writing and uh, clinical data management from Clinotech Institute. And through the, uh, the same institute, they helped me also in the placement and I joined in teaching. It was, this happened around 2012. And uh, after joining in ETG, like no, I joined as a clinical trial analyst training. And uh, when I got into the company, it was totally new. So coming to my struggles, like no, it's different from what we do from clinic. Like no, we, the medical knowledge is definitely utilized, but uh, when when we get into those kind of industries, it's more like you know, uh, using uh, technology. So uh, when during those days, at least nowadays, doctors are using laptops. So when I was graduated, we hardly used to use laptops. So uh, using the laptop itself was new to me. So getting used to the Outlook, uh, different Microsoft. So that from there, I mean, uh, the company still helped me, and uh, they gave us necessary trainings and. Initially, it was a struggle to get used to all those uh, new, new corporate things. But then uh, uh, what we had, uh, people like me had invested more time 
than regular people and uh, we try to learn all these new techniques and also there was uh, some things like you no know, technology thing related things for new that was a major challenge which i faced during my initial days but then later on like you no know, within 6 months to 8 months you def- definitely will cope up and learn all these things and you will become an expert and uh, following that i mean also the area is new where you know when we we are doing our bds we we do not know we all the pharmacology is there for, uh, in the second year we do, uh, we do not get into the depth like you no know, how are these drugs reaching into the market so those kind of so before, uh, those kind of information was like you know, where we had to sit back and read upon and do our homework uh, uh, on these topics so it took some time to learn and understand what is the process from uh, from the drug development to reaching to the market and all those uh, what are the type of clinical trials that's undergoing and what is the significance of each phases so those kind of knowledge uh, is available in the public domain so uh, i used to sit back and like you know, learn try to understand these things and uh, those as well as uh, you know frequent uh, like as we put our efforts we, we improved and like you know, within one one and a half years it was like it was fine and i was full set so that was my initial days of struggles now coming to the achievements so uh if, when you move into this industry you will try, tend to learn a lot of things which you are not aware of like you no know, like if you are uh, passionate about uh, writing and then when you get it to a job where you, i mean you know the basic writing and you get to in job which is related to your passion so that way i have grown so i joined as a clinical trial analyst where uh, i used to manage to uh, go through various registries uh, in different countries and like you know uh, do a kind of data management work from there later on i moved into uh, as a writing profile a clinical writer where we used to write up various kind of documents and then later on like you know, as and when we grow in the industry you also when you stay more you get to learn more things so later on we had moved to a profile of labeling strategy where we actually manage the labels uh, of the very of various drugs that's in the market we we actually manage what data goes into those uh, labels so that's about the struggle and achievements that i had like you know over these years that's great that's amazing a, a really a good journey i mean like quitting to all these you know new technologies and learning new stuff when you when you just switch your uh, domain or your industry from being a clinical dentist to something on a non clinical side yes there's a lot of struggle also because you new to the world is totally new and you need to acquire all the knowledge and everything and then of course when you when you start gaining that knowledge and when you grow it's it's always a good thing so um yeah. coming up to i mean clinical research how can a fresher you know they can start their uh, you know how can one start their journey into this field of clinical research after bds so uh, for a fresher to come in there are two options one either a person can actually get into uh, do uh, getting uh, into a institute where they provide it. Uh, there are a lot of uh, institute available outside where they give you a diploma uh, courses or post graduation courses in for this so there are some like you no know, when i was checking it was like jaipur university and a lot of other small small institutes are also available where you can also do a distant course you can go directly and get uh, go like if it's a short course most of the time they tell that to come and uh, live courses they'll give otherwise it's like you no know, distant courses which you can do with the time period i guess it varies from 6 months to uh, two years so uh, you can do a course and some of these institute also like you no know, along with this course they also guarantee you like you know, your placements like if there are any interviews happening they actually send you for they keep monitoring and then they inform you that these interviews happening in these companies so it helps in placement uh, but recently there are a lot of companies which are uh, also looking at uh, bds who these uh, candidates who have not even done the uh, course so they open to those kind of candidates so where you can find like you no know, walk in interviews and we can directly approach the company uh, through the company portal as well for these uh, openings if you find okay so that means there is not a compulsory you know requirement of gaining that knowledge through a professional institute or i mean somebody can start on their own also yes yes because all these uh, information are also publicly available so if you get a chance to uh, know know what basic things you want to uh, you have to be 
uh, aware of. So these things you can just read upon, and even the company doesn't expect you to be like, you know, uh, like your your undergone a course or anything. So company also understands that you're a fresher and basic things if you are aware of, and that's enough for the company. Okay. So now, like you mentioned, you know, there are institutes which are providing a short term course also, and then a distance learning program also. So if somebody goes for a distance learning pro program, is it like, uh, you know, accepted in the industry that somebody has gone through most of the time, like distance learning are not accepted. So it's, it's accepted here. It's accepted. So I think that's a that's a good thing to um, one can even go yeah. while they are practicing they can if they want they can pursue these kind of courses and then they can make a shift if they want to. Definitely, definitely. So if somebody is starting on their own, so what kind of skills are actually required from a fresher? So if you're uh, uh, from a uh, fresher, like if you're like interested, like when you read uh, when you are if you're interested in this field so basic things is like no you if you have a uh, good medical knowledge which obviously we'll have when if you're graduated in bts you will have good medical knowledge as well as uh, good communication and also like no basic uh, if you have basic understanding of uh, ms office that's the excel word powerpoint those three things are mainly what a company expects and also like uh, even the, they would uh, try to understand like you no know, what is your interest so they would uh, also ask questions which is mainly of general knowledge like you no know, what are the regulatory authorities like i mean it, nowadays if you see the current pandemic most of our uh, we are aware like you no know, what are the clinical trials happening and who is approving so we know in us it's us fda it's approving so those kind of general knowledge if you are aware and uh, if you if you are uh, also basic if you know about the clinical trials like uh, uh, what are the different phases and uh, relevance of it and that's enough for you to be prepared okay that's that's amazing that's so uh, just to compile everything one should have good communication skills they should have good medical knowledge and then basic general knowledge uh, you know topics around the pharmaceutical industry pharmaceutical industry yeah correct and also pharmacology like you know how strong you are with your pharmacology is just what they will just unlicense okay so when a fresher is trying to apply for a job, entry level job, of course, of the clinical research, how should they go for? I mean, like if they have to, uh, you know, type in the skills in say any job portal. So what kind of skills they should uh, apply for or what should they search to get that opportunity? So most of the time it is a medical writer itself or clinical trial analyst, which you will find as a profile. So it's uh, when you're applying, you can like, no, we have options like either you go directly to the company portal because each companies have their own uh, uh, specific tab for career options. So you can go just go and see there or uh, the regular other job websites uh, uh, is not free, which we generally prefer. Uh, the companies will look into and try to pull out the resource. Even LinkedIn also helps in that. So. Uh, that's how like recently I see most of the companies are trying to hire and reach out to the candidates if, even if it's fresher like you no know, they drop a message there and you can get back to them so even uh, if, if if a BTS graduate is interested they can also keep an eye on these portals and you know, try to graduate also if they have any contacts mm -hmm. in like you know, if they have any friends who they are aware of and they can do get it get it done through an internal reference because that definitely helps them to get is uh, easily into the company. Oh, that's right. So, can you just name few of the companies where a fresher can you know they can go on their job on their website and apply? So, uh, you can go into companies like Friars, Paraxel, like Indigene, then uh, um, Genpact, so service providers. They will definitely know, know what is. So, these certain companies will have their. Uh, you can just go into the directly into the career portal and directly search for a profile where they're looking for like you know they would have given their specificity like you no know, it's like zero to one year experience or zero to two years experience you can directly go and apply for their portal okay that's great uh, that's a nice information so uh, can also uh, like a fresh mds graduate can also apply or they can definitely in clinical research no, I mean, uh, even MDS uh, uh, can directly come and apply for uh, these kind of jobs. And uh, even when they apply, it's actually uh, 
it's not that uh, they will they will be considered equal equivalent to a bts graduate uh, definitely the company would consider their uh, degrees whatever they have and based on that they would be given a higher boost mm -hmm. yeah, that's what my next question was that if an mds is applied yeah. so will they be given preference or they'll be also treated the same no no it's it's uh, basically uh, bas their degree also will count and they according to that they will also be positioned accordingly Okay, that's that's good to know because generally you don't get this kind of information, you know, when you just read through and when you apply it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, then what? I mean, do you see any kind of opportunities if one wants to move outside India after gaining some years of experience in clinical research? Actually, that's I find that is that is one of the benefits. Like, you know, when you get into this kind of jobs, like, you know, if you would. We, we are aware that if, when we become doctors and when you move out and when you want to practice in other countries, you definitely have to undergo a exam and uh, you have to clear those specific country exam and then only you get to work there or permit to work there. So in case you're moving out to a country and if you have a work permit visa, there you may not have to clear any exams or anything. You can directly go and you can join a company and work this profile. So, which of the countries you think there is a good scope if one wants to shift? So, uh, obviously, it's US. US has a lot of pharmaceutical companies, and uh, they actually hire people. Uh, and also, UK, uh, European countries, Singapore, uh, Japan. So, these countries actually have a lot of like, you no know, pharma com companies. And like, if you have already already have a skill and you have already have some experience from India itself, and if you have moved out. Uh, it's easy to apply and work in these countries. That's that's good. So like, yeah, I think uh, it's good. And the pay scale. I mean, if you can just you know give an average pay scale, what a pressure is given. If a BDS pressure applies, or a BDS pressure applies. So the pay scale actually, country to country, it differs. Even in company to company, it differs. So I can just tell you from based on my companies or my experience. For if it's a BDS, actually the pay scale ranges from 3.5 to 5. With who has zero experience, and for MDS, actually it's uh, about five. Uh, the package will be definitely about five to six lakhs. It's about five to six lakhs, but it depends. This it may vary. This is a starting salary. For a yes, sa starting salary. Yeah. I think that's fair enough. Um, per annum. Per annum. So I think that's I mean that's a trend that's a non clinical I and mean, whether yeah. you join any any of the non clinical firms they uh, this is the average amount wherever it is it's paid it's being paid so yeah 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 fair enough. so uh, yeah. what do you think is the biggest advantage that you have gained over the years while working in clinical research I would tell that uh, as a uh, uh, like no, initially if, if you see uh, when we are doctors, like no, we only really intend to interact with patients and are uh, it's restricted to within the clinic uh, people. But here it's like no, the, you're entering to the corporate world and you get to interact with a lot of people and get to con understand it's a new scope. So personal personal wise, I have developed a lot and gained more confidence. And also, it's like you, know, you get an opportunity to like you know, present yourself. Like you know, here, actually, if you have that, if you get an opportunity for conference coverage and all those things, you tend to like you know, present yourself in conference in with in front of uh, various pharma companies. So that's something. Uh, and also, uh, like you know, I have learned a lot of new skills. So when you do, when we were graduating, we are coming out as the doctors and uh, we only know about how to uh, you know, treat a patient or uh, heal their pain. But now when you move into corporate, it's like you know, you're learning a lot of new other skills, like you know, basically technically, like uh, like how, how the things are advancing in pharma industry. And uh, like I learned how to do medical writing. I learned about literatures and those are the new things which I learned and I feel it's so one of the good, I mean, biggest achievements I have, like, you know, that turning point actually opened the door to a new world where I have learned a lot and I'm still learning and I'm still enjoying this phase of learning, actually. I think that's good. I mean, like, yes, learning will never stop because every time you join yeah. a new organization or you are you stepping into a new role as well also, there's always a new yeah. thing that comes with it. So, yeah, that's true. Yeah. 
so one last piece of advice or you know some uh, advice for the fresh graduates who want to join clinical research so uh, i would tell that uh, when you come out Uh, once you are passed out, definitely we will be looking out for opportunities for practicing. But uh, now, if you see the scenario, it's very competitive. Like, you no, know, the competition is so tough, and like, and there are so many doctors uh, there out. So, in that case, I would say that always think differently. Try to see what other options we have, and you no, know, we have. Although we are dentists, and uh, people think that we only know like about the head and neck region, but still we have the medical knowledge, and we should try to use that medical knowledge as much as possible. And you know, clinical research is the one place where uh, you can actually explore a lot and you can use your medical knowledge, like you know, to wide extent. So that's something which I would advise our uh, new doctors, telling that. please uh, don't think that we are only restricted to one area we can we, there are a lot of things lot of opportunities out there and we have to explore and you know, use our medical knowledge as much as possible and also if you are passionate enough for uh, medical uh, writing or i mean if you are in passionate about writing or if you are like you know very good at with uh, technologies mm-hmm. and uh, l- love using laptop playing around with laptop and microsoft office there are a lot of uh, opportunities to grow here and it will be really amazing joining for everybody i think that's amazing that that's really nice and a good piece of information and advice to all the fresh graduates that you know world is not restricted to clinical side of it but then you can explore yeah. you can use your knowledge and then explore and then you have a lot of things that one can do in the healthcare industry so yeah. yes yes correct thank you so much dr kanda yeah. for sharing such you know wonderful information with us because when you interact with an industry expert then only you get to know the details of you know, how the industry is working and what all skills are actually required whether i mean yeah. reading through it you will not get, get so much information but then yes the interaction always helps so thank you so yeah. much for you know coming on our platform sharing all the insights and i'm sure that uh, people who are watching uh, us today they will definitely be you know uh, getting motivated and will be inspiring to uh, get into the field of clinical research so thank you once again yeah. thank you and uh, for all those who have been listening to us patiently thank you very much for listening and coming on board uh, you know getting to know the this field of clinical research please like and share this video in your network so that uh, you know somebody who's actually getting into clinical research it can be helpful to them and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and like our facebook page to get notified of all such information that we post on regular basis i will see you in the next video until then bye and good luck